It is a giant patch of yogurt. How much have you made? <laughs> Three litres. <laughs> we are right in the midst of a whole bunch of unsurveyed water. Welcome to Free Range Sailing. For the last four years we have been sailing around our island continent and sharing our experiences with you. Yes, look at that. Sensation. After nine months of hard work, we have just completed an extensive refit of our 50-year-old 30-foot fiberglass sailboat in Tasmania. Now we have a short weather window to close the loop and sail the 2,000 nautical miles home to Western Australia before the westerly winds of autumn return. To join us each week in a race against time to reunite with our families, thanks for subscribing to our channel and hitting the bell button. After a couple of days recovery anchored in stunning Door Island, it was time to pack up the boat, have breakfast and begin the next leg of our passage. Well Pasky's up, up on Adam, she's, uh, she's just made three litres of yoghurt so she's really thrilled. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just about to have my second cup of coffee and then we're going to shove off. For the next couple of days we're doing day sailing only because we're right in the midst of a whole bunch of unsurveyed water. So when we were coming here to Door Island to come and frolic with the seals, um, we saw a really good example of just how uncharted things are, unsurveyed things are, because there's a big, flat, dangerous rock <laughs> that was totally not on any chart whatsoever as we were coming in. So um, I've sort of vetoed the idea of any night sailing just for the next two days. So we're just, it's going to be quite pleasant, you know. We'll just do a couple of day hops. We've got 500 something miles to go. Um, but we should be able to break it up so we don't have to do any any more than say 48 hours at a time Which is kind of nice So what we'll do is we'll hop along now. Um, we're aiming to go to Middle Island and then Cape La Grande And then um, we should be lining ourselves up to take on Cape Lewin Which is one of three of the big capes of the world, isn't it? So um, it doesn't go that far south, so hopefully it won't be as dramatic as, say, going around Cape Horn or something like that. But <laughs> not, on board Marul, you never know what's going to happen. Anyway, as soon as Pasky's, um, as soon as Pasky's sorted out this, this yogurt, we'll go and have a look at Pasky doing yogurt. <laughs> it's, it's, it's something to behold. I made a giant batch of yogurt in the shop, Chef. It is a giant batch of yogurt. How much have you made? <laughs> Three litres. <laughs> I just mixed the milk powder. Um, Brought it to the boil just in case there was any bacteria or anything like that. Let it cool down to 45 degrees. Added a couple of tablespoons of um, the old yogurt as a starter culture. Put it in the shuttle chef with another saucepan of warm water so it stayed warm um, for overnight. So, and then yogurt came out. Surprise! It's really thick. I'm really happy with it. Look at that. Oh, that's a good yogurt. Got whey. It's got way too much thickness. <laughs> Look at it. It's a good yogurt. Oh, there's breakfast in here. What is that? Ah, I pulled out a green tea chia pudding. I made it last night for breakfast. What? Yeah. Oh man. It's like a creamy mousse. And what's in that? Um, coconut cream, cream, uh, much green tea powder, chia seeds, and a little bit of vanilla stevia. This is a pretty exotic boat. <laughs> what's it? What's it taste like? It's really good. It's actually like quite cold. Kind of tastes like ice cream because I put cream in it last night. <sighs> mm, it's really nice. I'm gonna have to try some. Mm.
So we had a great day's passage to get us to Middle Island and it was time for a little bit of luxury. With some surge entering our bay, we had a bit of a roll in the anchorage, but herring were already gathering around as more than compensation. We would have liked to stay and explore, but we had to push on if we were going to make our arrival in Perth on time. After we brought in our first fish, we had another on the line. Oh, that's another one. As well as great fishing, this part of Australia has some dramatic scenery, but plenty of hazards to be aware of. We usually clean our catch underway and this time it attracted quite a crowd.
When you look at our logo and you see that bird there that's flying, it's a it's a shearwater. And that's our, our logo, our totem. And now you know why, because they are super cool. They free dive, they can fly, you know, they're great on the wind. They're better than on the wind than we are, that's for sure. And now we know they can surf. And they surf. And walk on water. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're another type of Jesus bird. So. Oh, I never expected that they would um, they would go for scraps quite like that, but I guess these ones know about fishing boats. But I, I never, I never had any idea they could barefoot water ski. <laughs> so there's our end product. As usual, just taking them off, trying to get that nice, nice teardrop shape for sashimi. It doesn't have a strong smell. That looks like um, once we've chilled that down, that's going to be some premier food. So we've we've got a bunch of herring, we've got a really big calamari last night, and now we've got this uh, frigate tuna, frigate mackerel, mackerel tuna. I don't know my southern fish very well. I know it's going to be tasty. The fish we caught were actually striped bonito, but you'll have to forgive us incorrectly referring to these fish as frigate mackerel for the remainder of the video. Been a, this has been a pretty good day. Um, we had to motor all day yesterday, and if we had our preference, we would have just waited. We would have just waited till um, the wind had returned. But we've got to make miles. We had to get through the the archipelago here of the Recherche um, in daylight hours, you know, because of the unsurveyed parts. Now we're into better surveyed areas, but it's still pretty close in here, so we, we want to day sail here as well. We had, to, um, we had to motor for about an hour to get out from Middle Island, um, even though with the head sail up, you know, for stabilisation, we did pretty good. But just as, the, um, just as those frigate mackerel came on board, the wind started to, to come up. So now we're seeing 15, 16 knots, and it's just starting to gust a little bit as well. So that's nice. So we're, we're just starting to make a fairly consistent 4.9 knots now. We'll get up to 5 later on, so that should have us into our anchorage by 6 o'clock. It doesn't get dark till 7, so that's, that's a bit of a happy occasion. It's not like um, it's not like when we were getting around the coral reefs a lot where we had to get in with daylight to be able to use our Polaroids to get in. Um, a lot of these anchorages are fairly well charted um, where the rocks are, and then the rest of it is back basically just finding sandy patches in amongst all the bull kelp where you can put an anchor and it will actually hold. We're not even bothering with a head sail at the moment because the wind is just just straight up our backside. <laughs> Still, um, we're just running on a running on a head sail. Yeah. Not bothering with the mainsail. What did I say? Headsail. Did I? Yeah. Oh, you, I'm, I think I'm going senile. <laughs> it's all right. I'm sure everyone knew what you meant. Because we're just running downwind. We we can't seem to we can't seem to get the wind any anywhere like outside <laughs> of. Fifteen degrees, yeah. So we'll see. Anyway, that's about the extent of our troubles. Is the wind isn't exactly where we want it. So no whinging here. Got ship logs away. Go back out. Have some fun.
As you can see from the GPS, we spent the rest of the afternoon jiving between the shoal grounds to get to our anchorage at Lucky Bay. Fortunately, we were going fast enough that despite the extra distance travelled, it looked like we'd be able to drop the peak before nightfall. As the winds boosted in the afternoon, you can see the following seas really started to develop, so Troy took hold of the tiller for the rest of the passage to maintain good speed down the waves. Get a wrap on that, but I'll I wanna I wanna curl this. Yeah. I'm gonna deep power us a little bit. Why we reef. Mm. Look at that balancing rock. Mm -hmm. I love balancing rocks. Whoa. I don't unneeded, but not necessary. Balanced. <laughs> Six point two knots. got the delicious, well we didn't know it was delicious until right now, uh, mackerel that we caught, frigate mackerel that we caught today and we have it served up as sashimi. We've got some belly cuts and some shoulder cuts here. It's got a really nice mild flavour. Uh, it's blowing like crazy out there. That's that, that's our wind gener generator going and making us lots of power while we tuck into, um, I guess this is dinner or maybe it's an appetizer. We might have more food because we haven't had much lunch today. So it's bled really, really well. It's got a beautiful sheen. It's nice and chilled. We got it cold quite quickly in the fridge. We put it at the bottom of the fridge. Um, yeah, and it's really quite delicious. Well, lots of people have said to us that they don't really like eating the smaller tuna bonito style tunas and those little frigate mackerel type fish, but we definitely think they're worth eating. Um, if you bleed them well and get them cold, they're really tasty especially a sashimi. Bit of wasabi. Mm. We hope you enjoyed this week's video and if you did, thanks for giving it a thumbs up. It really helps us out. If you haven't already, thanks also for subscribing. And until then, we'll see you next time.